Hi my friends, and welcome back to my channel. This video, we give you a piece of breaking news. Financial expert warns Harry and Meghan will miserably face huge tax bills from Uncle Sam if he stays in California. I don't think Harry and Meghan have totally thought through the financial consequences of their exit from the royal family. The Duke of Sussex faces a significant financial hit from zealous US tax authorities. The financial expert has said, as he warned that the Duke and Duchess had not thought through the high cost of a Californian life. The couple spent more than $11.5 million on an estate in Montecito, where they plan to live and raise their son Archie in relative normality. But once the Duke has spent 183 days in the US for over a three-year period, he will be considered a resident for tax purposes and liable for the tax. David McClure, the author of the forthcoming book The Queen's True Worth, said California is a high state tax, and he's likely to get hit. I don't think Harry and Meghan have totally thought through the financial consequences of their exit from the royal family. The more their expenditure rises in California, the greater the pressure to generate their income in more down-market commercial deals. That's always been the worry of the palace. McClure said the Duke would have to hand over much more detail about his personal finances and earnings than he would in the UK. The US taxman is much more zealous than his UK counterpart. For that reason, Harry will have to watch his step on the income he generates, he said. The Sussexes are estimated to have a joint worth of between £16 million and £20 million. The combined outgoings of property tax, mortgage repayments, staff, security, and the £18,000 a month they are repaying UK taxpayers for the refurbishment of Frogmore House in Windsor are vast, estimated to reach up to £5 million annually. Their Santa Barbara estate was purchased through a shell company listed at the Los Angeles address of the Duchess's business manager, Andrew Meyer. The address was used by the Duchess when she set up her Frim Fram and MM Global companies, which McClure said could suggest they are worried about the tax implications of association with the Duke. The type of visa he has traveled on will be key in determining his tax status. Foreign citizens who marry an American and intend to reside in the U.S. must obtain a U.S. immigrant visa to become a lawful permanent resident. It is possible that the Duke used diplomatic status to enter the U.S., but since he is no longer working on behalf of the royal family, it is thought unlikely. Indeed, Meghan and Harry also may struggle to pay back taxpayers for Frogmore after splashing out. Some experts fear they can't afford the home along with running costs and repaying taxpayers for the renovations on Frogmore Cottage. The Sussex's new home is reportedly worth at least $10 million more than what they purchased it for. According to the Daily Mail, Harry and Meghan have a $9.5 million mortgage for their new home. Moreover, running costs per year on the home will no doubt be extortionate. The mortgage is estimated to be around $480,000 a year, with property tax at $68,000. Any staff they might get could cost them $300,000. Utilities are $24,000, and security at $3.3 million. Therefore, it will cost the pair about $4.4 million just to live in, in addition to the money they are paying back British taxpayers for more than £2 million of Frogmore Cottage renovations. Royal finance expert David McClure seemed skeptical of their purchase of such an expensive property in an interview with The Sun. He said, I am surprised they can afford it at all. They must start making money quickly. Have this couple no shame? People across the world are losing their jobs and homes due to the fallout of COVID. Yet they can apparently buy a discounted home from the Russian mafia and stick their fingers up at the British taxpayer by not paying the renovation debts on Frogmore House. They truly are shameless. Meanwhile, according to New York Post, Finding Freedom dissects Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's break with the royal family. We discuss it together now. Usually, deciphering British palace intrigue is like reading tea leaves, trying to discern nuance from opaque gestures. But the latest chapter of the saga of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle requires little decoding. In Finding Freedom, Harry and Meghan and the Making of a Modern Royal Family, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex effectively spilled the tea on their frustrations with the monarchy, from which they officially exited senior roles in March. The sensitivity of some details, Harry's secret Instagram handle, the prince's fondness for the ghost emoji, that the couple fired their night nurse over unprofessional and irresponsible behavior on her second shift, 
suggest proximity to the couple who tellingly have not denied the accounts. There isn't much for them to quibble with. For admirers of Harry and Meghan, Finding Freedom is 354 pages of sorbet, a dishy narrative that pushes back against media attacks while tracing the couple's connection from July 1, 2016. Blind date. Almost immediately, they were almost obsessed with each other, a friend said. It was as if Harry was in a trance. Through their engagement, globally televised wedding, and the birth of their son, Archie Harrison. While fans of Harry and Meghan will undoubtedly enjoy the book's unwaveringly positive portrayal of her angelic disposition and his emotional intelligence, those who sympathize with other relatives or closely follow the royals are more likely to see the book as telling only part of the story or as a means to air grievances against palace courtiers and Harry's relatives. After their relationship became public in October 2016, paparazzi and media outlets aggressively hunted Meghan. When friends questioned the fast-moving relationship or the suitability of the biracial divorced American actress, Harry would wonder, is this about race? Is this snobbery? He cut off longtime friends and grew estranged from his older brother after Prince William reportedly urged Harry to take as much time as you need to get to know this girl. Citing the rapid emergence of bias and race-baiting in media coverage, the book says a major theme of racism in Britain involves the question of who is authentically English, which means to be born and bred in the UK and be white. Scobie, whose father is Scottish and mother Iranian, mentions his history with biracial bias, including microaggressions from a palace staffer that suggest authority on discrimination Meghan may have faced. His previous sympathetic coverage of the couple also suggests why Harry and Meghan would have authorized friends to talk. Beyond mentioning some of Meghan's earlier experiences with racism and saying Archie's birth raised visibility around race and inclusion at the heart of the monarchy, the book says little about how the Windsors, as opposed to AIDS, viewed Meghan as a person of color. Although Meghan called herself a woman of color in South Africa last fall, how she or Harry hoped to explore her or Archie's heritage in their work is unclear. Scobie and Durand report on the distant relationship between Meghan and her sister-in-law, Kate Middleton. They go deep behind the scenes in unraveling the controversy Meghan's father, Thomas Markle, caused in colluding with the paparazzi to appear in sympathetic images shortly before the wedding, which he ultimately didn't attend. The book also chronicles the Sussex's longtime unhappiness with palace practices of not commenting on media inaccuracies, with occasional exceptions for higher-ranking relatives and prioritizing senior royals' initiatives. Unaddressed is the implicit issue that however right Harry and Meghan's arguments may have been about their popularity and media bias, they were outranked in a centuries-old hereditary hierarchy, yet the book notes the establishment feared their popularity might eclipse that of the royal family itself. Harry's trauma over the media's role in the death of his mother Diana, Princess of Wales, and the damaged tabloid scrutiny inflicted on previous relationships is evident in his hair-trigger hostility towards paparazzi and his determination to protect his wife. Battered and bruised by media attacks and absent family support, the Sussexes decided to opt out and announced their plan before finalizing details with the palace, sparking a media firestorm and family rifts that remain unhealed. As the book details the couple's final official engagements, a tearful Megan tells Scobie, it didn't have to be this way. The book portrays a couple driven away by a toxic media environment and untenable protocol. I don't need to have that movie moment where we get out of the car and wave to a hundred photographers before going into a building, Harry reportedly told a friend, saying the focus should be on the work happening inside. Therein lies the conundrum. The Sussexes quit official life, but the monarchy is Harry's family business. Criticizing the Windsors stands to damage family ties and possibly weaken the affiliation that produced the couple's platform. Harry and Meghan may feel freer to speak out, but as the very existence of finding freedom demonstrates, there is still reason to be careful about what they say. And you? What do you think about this opinion? Please let me know in the comment section and we can discuss together. If you liked my video, remember to like and share it for anyone you think might also be interested. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to not miss any comments about the Sussex couple. Now, have a nice day, and see you in the next videos. Tax plays an important role in the current society without state taxes will not be able to operate strongly. State budgets revenue, taxes are considered the most important long-term stable, and as the economy develops, this revenue increases, 